Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk women's basketball and with the Bulldogs on the road here in the first round of the GLIAC tournament on Tuesday night. Uh, joined by the color commentator for Ferris State women's basketball, Sandy Golston. And Sandy, uh, welcome to the show. I'm going to do my best to fill in for Coach Faustin and uh, hopefully I'll do Coach real proud. And Great to be here and uh, hopefully uh, they'll have some good luck going up to the UP. Obviously, uh, the Bulldogs have had a great year for the women's basketball mm -hmm. side and uh, have guaranteed themselves a winning season, uh, first time since 2011-2012. Yeah, they've been on a nice roll here the last three games, uh, all on the road, in fact. The uh, Bulldogs had a, a long stretch at home, and then they come back, and they really had a strong finish to the month of February with three big wins on the road to hopefully give them some momentum, some momentum going into the quarterfinals of the GLIAC tournament up in Marquette. As we go to some of the highlights uh, this past week, uh, the Bulldogs just one game on the road to wrap up the regular mm -hmm. season at Lake Superior and uh, mm -hmm. always a tough place to play, but uh, got a nice win here on the road. It really is a, a tough place to play when you, when you think of Lake Superior. Um, they do uh, a lot of things well. They play very hard. Um, they're a well-coached basketball team. And uh, like a lot of teams in the GLIAC, Rob, they play really well at home. And so the Bulldogs knew that they were going to be challenged and, uh, you know, a uh, little bit uh, underplayed, if you will. But yet they had some other players that really stepped up and filled in some nice roles. Bulldogs, uh, you mentioned underplayed, uh, playing without Riley Blair here in this game. But they've uh, done a good job really adjusting uh, with some people out of the lineup at various stages of the season. Yeah, they have. And, uh, you know, we just saw a highlight there from Jalen Brumfield. And she's one of the players that uh, really stepped up and has filled in. And you see her right there with a nice uh, lead pass there to Huggins. And so she's been one of the players that's really stepped up to, to fill in some roles. The Bulldogs have had some issues with some players in and out of the lineup. And uh, that's one of the reasons you like to have depth is so when you have somebody out, you have other players that can step in. Brian Benner here with a nice move, uh, 16 points, 13 rebounds, and a player that has really developed her game. She really has. And you look at the, the players who have made maybe the biggest strides from last year to this year, and Brian Benner is certainly up there, a player now in the post that you look at and teams feel like they have the game plan for her. And uh, that includes at times double teams that can open things up for the shooters on the outside or the slashers going to the basket. Bulldogs uh, here in the first half with a slim lead, and they were able to hold on to this lead uh, here going into halftime. Lexi Bush with a basket and uh, really a, a veteran senior that has provided some outstanding leadership. Yeah, you know, she plays that lead guard role for the Bulldogs, and she does it really well, and uh, she does a good job of really controlling the team, and she's also a big shot maker in terms of shooting the three or taking the ball to the basket, and we know she's clutch at the free throw line as well, and that's what you expect from your leaders to be able to control the game and to be able to make big shots. 32-27 here as we go to the second half. Shania Huggins uh, with the basket finish with 18 points, named the, the GLIAC Women's Basketball Player of the Week. Yeah, I tell you what, she has uh, really developed uh, one of the other players that we've talked about that's made some good strides during her career to really take control of that point guard position. She's capable of pushing the basketball. She's capable of defending, putting a lot of ball pressure on. And she's a good finisher inside. You can see a great left-hand finish going to the basket. Common theme over these last few games for the Bulldogs. Uh, they got up to the, the lead. Uh, the other team tries to come back, but they, they made some big plays to answer. Yeah, you know it's going to be a game of runs. That's typically the way basketball is. is see another great play there by Jalen Brumfield. It's going to be a, a game of runs. And so what you have to do is when the other team makes that run, you have to stay mentally tough. You have to stay focused. Stick to your principles and know that if you do the right things, that you'll have that run and hopefully you'll have the last run. Down to a two-point ball game, but the Bulldogs answer here with a couple big baskets and uh, able to take control here uh, down, the, down the line here at the finish and, and get a nice win to wrap up the regular season. Yeah, they really did. And, uh, you know, you knew that Lake Superior was going to make a run. They were going to come back and they were going to fight back. But the Bulldogs really did a good job of holding on down the stretch, elevating their play, and making some big uh, plays down the stretch to help them hang on for a big road win to close the regular season. 68-59 the final, and now the GLIAC tournament, as you mentioned, the GLIAC mm -hmm. quarterfinals, as the Bulldogs have to travel back to the Upper Peninsula <laughs> to face Northern Michigan here for the third time this season. Yeah, another trip to the UP and uh, the Western UP, as, a, as it will be. And I think it's a great opportunity for the Bulldogs. You look at the series, series that they've had this season with Northern, a couple of really close games. Uh, you had the game, both games, uh, you had the game up in Marquette, uh, really a tough game uh, for the Bulldogs. They came off of an even tougher game against Michigan Tech, did a nice job bouncing back, played Northern Michigan much tougher, and then had a heartbreaking loss to Northern uh, just recently, a couple weeks ago. And so hopefully they're ready to bounce back. They played Northern really well, and it seems to be a good matchup for us. Uh, team or a game here that pits two contrasting styles. Uh, Fair State <laughs> obviously likes to get up and down the floor. Northern Michigan, a, a team that has a, a lot of size inside. Yeah, Northern's going to you know slow it down. They want to control the tempo. They want to really work that ball inside. They want to pound you on the glass. And so it's going to be very important for the Bulldogs to really control the glass and really get the tempo that they want and take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. We talked about it on the men's side uh, here on the women's side as well. Mm -hmm. The GLIAC tournament, a, a strong field. You got two teams right at the top, Grand Valley and Ashland, that are among the best teams in the country. Oh, it is. And, uh, when you get to 
to this stage of the season, uh, you get to the GLIAC tournament, you got eight teams and they're all very, very good. You mentioned Ashland, you mentioned Grand Valley, two of the best teams in the nation right there at the top of the conference. And so it's going to be tough for anybody to uh, make it through that field with those two teams at the top. But, you know, there's opportunity there. And the Bulldogs have played uh, Grand Valley tough at times. They've played Ashland tough at times. And so they've put themselves in a position right now that if they can take care of business on Northern against Northern, hey, you never know what could happen. Nice to see the progress the Bulldogs have had uh, here over the past couple seasons under uh, Coach Faustin. Last year, obviously, went on the road and first round of the GLIAC tournament, pulled off the upset, got to the semifinals, and, and here this season have really followed that up with a, with a nice season. Yeah, they did. Uh, that, I think that was a great confidence builder for the Bulldogs. Um, uh, you had to go and play Ashland after that, but uh, it was a great confidence builder for the Bulldogs, and I think helped to give them some momentum going into the offseason. And, and then you look at this season, they're playing well of late. Three straight wins for the Bulldogs all on the road, and hopefully they can continue that magic on the road at Northern. What does it mean uh, for a college campus uh, here at Ferris State having two teams, uh, both men's and women's basketball, that are competitive each and every night? Well, I think, you know, our fans have really embraced both basketball programs. And I think a big part of that, Rob, is the outreach that Coach Bronkema and Coach Faustin have done in the community and lots of community service, lots of a community engagement. They go and they thank the fans after the game. So really engaged with the fans. And so that helps to bring the fans in even more. And, of course, everybody likes a team that wins. And we have two teams right now that are going to finish with winning records. And uh, they're doing things the right way. And so it's a lot of excitement for Bulldog basketball around the community and on campus. And call it March Madness for a reason. Should oh, be yeah. an exciting uh, month of March here for uh, both the Ferris State basketball teams here in the GLIAC tournament. Well, you know, we've been there in March and uh, it's a lot of fun to call those games, uh, whether they're GLIAC tournament games or NCAA tournament games. It truly is March Madness and uh, it's a lot of fun for us and even more fun for the players and coaches. Bulldogs had a great memory, obviously, last year winning in the GLIAC mm -hmm. tournament. What's it take uh, for, the, for the Bulldog women here to get a win here in the first round? Well, I think they have to go up with confidence. I think they have to go and really try to push the basketball, get the tempo that they want, and they're going to have to hold their own on the boards against a very good Northern Michigan team and that's going to include their post players staying out of foul trouble and really hanging in there and really clearing that glass to get the ball into the hands of the guards to push the tempo and get some easy baskets. Well Sandy thanks for being with us here today and uh, looking forward to following the Bulldogs here in postseason play. It's my pleasure and I'll be right there with you following them. That's going to do it for Ferris Sports Update. Reminder you can follow all the action online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com. Have a great week.